Midweek on the mountain continues as Jack State pays a visit to Liberty. Usually we sit down with a player, but we're switching it up a little bit this week, sitting down with co-offensive coordinator and quarterbacks coach Willie Korn. Coach Korn, thank you so much for your time. Before we dive into the specifics of this game tonight, I just want to know your overall grade for this offense midway through the season. Uh, Mid-season grade, I would just say, um when we just haven't been consistent. I think the word is inconsistency. There's one drive where you can come out and go down the field and put points on the board, and then the next drive's a three and out. So I think uh, the biggest thing going into the second half is just developing that consistency and, and, um, and getting back on track. As the play caller, where is your focus heading into the second half of the season? And what have you maybe learned about Caden Salter that you didn't know from last season? I think uh, the biggest thing I've learned with uh, with Caden is I feel like he probably plays at his best when you get him in an early run, you get him tackled early on in the game. That's one of the things that he and I had a conversation uh, about after game five, like, hey, because um, there's some games where we start fast, there's a lot of games where we don't start fast. You know, hey, what can we do as an offensive staff to help you get into that rhythm? Because when you are in a rhythm and you're locating the ball and you're making decisions like you're capable of making, we're, we're dangerous. We're really dangerous offensively, but sometimes what do we have to do to kick into that rhythm? And that's one of the things that he mentioned, like just getting get me an early run, get me tackled early on, just gets me into the flow of the game. And, you know, obviously you want to get your quarterback in the rhythm, but also you can't lose sight of your best player. Quentin Cooley's got to touch the football, whether it's a direct, whatever it is, he's got to make sure that he gets the football. Yeah, speaking of the run game, how difficult has it been for you as a play caller splitting the series between Billy Lucas and Quentin Cooley and really just going with the hot hand, but then still getting, like you said, Cooley those touches like he deserves? Well, I think um, uh, the challenge of last week was uh, we had over at least 20 snaps or two minute drives. The drive before halftime was a two minute drive where you're just, you're not really running the football, but you're trying to get it down the field and, and get a, a score before half. Same thing at the last drive, the two minute drive to uh, make it a three point game at the, end of, at the end of the game. So we had 20 snaps that were two minute drives. So they're really, what Kennesaw did a good job was they limited our possessions. We didn't have very many possessions. You didn't have a total, a lot of normal down and distance play. So I think that, that played into it, but you know, you can make up whatever excuse you, you want to make, but at the end of the day, it falls on my shoulders that I got to make sure that number 20 is, is getting his opportunities and, and getting the football uh, his way. And because that's when, that's when good things happen for this offense. This is the first regular season loss that you've experienced since your time here at Liberty and with these players. What has the mood and energy been like at practice this week? Practice has actually been surprisingly really, really good. Um, I think we kind of drew a line in the sand at that first team meeting after the Kennesaw State game, and we pointed out the corrections that need to be made uh, and the thing where we're falling short. And we said, hey, after we're, we're done with this team meeting, the, that chapter is closed and we're moving on. We're not going out to this practice and moping around and talking about should, would, could. It's over. We have no power uh, in the past. We have no power in the future either. either. We have power right now. Uh, within being in the present. So I think it's actually been a really, really good week of uh, practice. I think the biggest challenge of what we've tried to convey to the guys is we have to play as, as one team. Sometimes it feels like it's an offense and a defense uh, out there. And sometimes it feels that way at practice, you know, because I think they are very, very competitive and they want to win every drill. They want to win every, but you know, some, when it's game day, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter who's, if the offense is better or the defense. Like we just got to find a way to have each other's backs. So I think that's been the biggest challenge. I think they've had, they've had a really good week of preparation um, and um, they haven't carried that loss with them. They're ready to move on and, and go play. Speaking of preparation, I know you're not going to give us the full game plan, but what are the keys to beating Jacksonville State offensively? Well, you have to run the football. You have to establish the run. This is a defense. Um, it's a, it's a different structured defense. They don't play with a fourth down lineman. They play with a, th a third safety. So it's really totally different than anything you see. It's a great scheme. Their defensive staff does a tremendous job. Um, so you have to establish the run game. If you can't run the football, it's difficult. There's not as many passing windows because there's a third DB in the game. Once you start establishing the run, you get their secondary more aggressive fitting for the run. They have to be aggressive to fit for the run because they're playing without, without an extra D lineman. And once you get that, now you get opportunities to potentially hit some shots down the field, which um, you have to be able to do against this defense. The, team that, the teams that are moving the ball and playing well offensively against them, they get the run game going, they get the secondary aggressive fitting for the run, and they're able to hit some shots uh, down the field. Now, it can't just be boom or bust in the pass game where it's just shots only, so some of the pass game has to be you're trying to get rubs. They play a lot of man coverage, a lot of press. Uh, but at the end of the day, you got to get the run game going. Uh, you got to get Quentin Cooley going early to get them to commit to the run, and that will open up other things in the pass game. Well, this offense is in good hands. Thanks so much for your time. Best of luck out there against Jack State. Thanks, Thanks. Coach. Thank you.